Hello, welcome back to Regrowth. Today is a momentous day. It is a day of great advancement. Today is the day that we get a pair of clippers. Yes, if you've never used these before, these are the secret to bulking out seeds. I'm just going to take my triple ten nature seeds here. And I just realized that they need to actually grow up a little bit, so I'm just going to take these essence seeds, which I also need lots of. When you use clippers, you degrade the growth of your plant a little bit. It, of course, very quickly grows back. And you get these clippings. When you use the clippings on a crop stick, it clones the plant. Now, if your plant is not perfect, there's not a 100% chance of the clone happening. Sometimes you can just waste the clipping. But with triple ten seeds, it's 100%. That is what the strength stat is used for in this pack. To my knowledge, it has no other uses because weeds are turned off. So once these nature seeds grow just a tiny little bit, I can clone them. Then I have two growing. Then I can have four spaces, and I can very quickly fill out this entire plot. I can clone any seed infinitely from just a single seed. What, did you think I was actually going to start off with heavy industry right away? Ha! <laughs> no. Also, another thing you might notice. The glowing blue color of my tools. This is because now that we have iron, I thought I had something in that furnace, forgive me, we can make mana steel. And one of the things about mana steel is it doesn't actually melt in a smeltery. Instead, you have to take it down to your part builder and use it in here and it works just like flint and all the other things. Now, it pretty much has a similar mining speed to flint, but it has a mining level of bronze. When flint and bone, I believe, are... Yeah, they're... Ah, it doesn't list it there. Oh well. It's better. And it gives you more durability to boot. With these tools, I'll be able to work my way through the nether. And once I get into the nether, I can start actually mining more materials because this pack has nether ores. Once I build myself a smeltery, which is something that I can start doing once I get copper mass manufactured so I can make vats and other things. Once I build a smeltery, I can melt down the nether ores, and I can work my way up to top-tier tools, just progressing through the nether. These are exciting times we live in. We have triple ten copper, our very first metal crop maximized. I'm just going to very quickly clone all this. And that is how fast you can fill out a field. And best of all, you can see that they're all already scanned. Clippers are just awesome. Copper is just awesome. Everything is awesome! Oh my, yes! Sprinklers! <laughs> hmm. Hmm. I think it's helping. Oh yeah, that's definitely helping. So let me walk you down the next little thing that I'm going to be doing. 
I am going to be trying to make these earth seeds, and in fact all the other elemental seeds, but these require some of these elemental runes from Batania, and the rune in earth in particular requires mushrooms. Now, I have some agrocraft mushroom seeds, but that needs to grow on mycelium. I can make mycelium with infestation spores, but to make infestation spores, I need mushrooms. I'm in a catch-22 situation, or so you would think, because any type of mushroom, in fact, will work, including these Natura Glow Shrooms, which you can find all over the place in the nether. That's right, it's time to make a nether portal. And to make that a little bit easier on myself, I have these Mariculture Fluid Tanks, which each hold 16 buckets of liquid. And I am going to go out and I am going to find a surface pool of magma. I've seen a couple just laying around. And I am going to get myself the materials for a nether portal. <laughs> bloopin' up lava, bloopin' up lava, bloopin' up, bloopin' up, bloopin' up lava, bloopin' up lava, bloopin' up lava, bloopin' up lava song. Now, I could just place the lava down in the world and pour water over it and cast out a shape of a portal, but that's always a little bit wonky. So I'll just go the easy way and make a mariculture vat, put the lava in one tank of it, and water in another. And after a couple of seconds of steaming and smoking, which shouldn't take this long, it happens instantly in real life, there we go, we get just obsidian to hang on to. Eh, I'll use this first piece for something else, actually. Because obsidian is also really useful in Tinker's Tools. If we make something like a binding out of it, we can put it on our pickaxe, and it will give that pickaxe reinforced three, which works similarly to the unbreaking enchantment, in that every time we use the pickaxe, there will be a 30% chance it will not take damage. Now, if we had eight pieces of obsidian, or four pieces in a smeltery, we could make this large plate out of obsidian two. And that can go on to a tool as a modifier. And that will increase the level of reinforcement on the tool by plus one. And yes, it does stack with the three that's already on there. And Tinker's reinforcement can go up to level 10, at which point the tool is literally invincible. Now, you're only really going to see that if you build a tool especially for it. On these general use tools, we probably won't see it. But if you get reinforcement up to level five or six, and you have a piece of moss on there, you'll find that your tool is pretty much always in tip-top condition, even if you're using it constantly. Now, I think this other half of it, this obsidian shard, I think I'll just make a tool rod of that and put it on... Uh, actually, no. I think I will make a wide guard out of it. Here's another little Another uh, a pro strat for you. If you have a stick or anything else that's worth just something in Tinker's Tools, you can recreate it in the part builder. Everything is morphable until you put it on the tool itself and it's lost until you replace it. And, you know, like we have a bone guard on there and we aren't getting the bone guard back. Neat. If I'm going to be venturing into the nether, it's about time that I make myself some proper armor. Mana steel is... I don't have enough mana. Mana steel is a pretty good 
Oh, actually, I think I have a quest for Man of Steel. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by a billion things. And I have tons of quests to turn in. Ah, excellent! This gives us a mana tablet. I'll pick the Daybloom. That's actually just a nice little burst of mana that'll go into our pool, and I'll get my last piece of mana steel from that. Hmm? No, not yet. Oh well. But yeah, mana steel armor is the equivalent of iron in defense, but so long as we have this mana tablet in our inventory, whenever we take damage, instead of the armor being damaged, the mana tablet will lose a teeny, tiny, absolutely itty bitty bit of mana. It lasts for freaking ever. And that also goes for our Mana Steel Shears. I think you might have seen before, these had a tiny little bit of damage, and as soon as we put... As soon as we put the Mana Tablet in our inventory, it just repaired itself. So yeah, with a full suit of Mana Steel armor, we will have relatively decent protection. And we won't ever have to worry about our armor breaking. Also, I believe it is vastly more enchantable than armor. No, not yet. Oh, well. Okay, nether journey checklist. I have some cobblestone to build. I have a chest to put down just a little supply depot on the other side, as well as a crafting station. I have a chisel just to make everything pretty. I built myself some extra knives, just so that I have ammo to cycle through. Everything that is relatively rare is put away, except, of course, for my full mana tablet, which I need to keep my armor in condition. I have a full flint and steel, and I have a nether portal. The nether in this pack isn't especially dangerous. It has Natura, which has those heat scar spiders, but it doesn't have the Erebus Black Widows. The pigmen aren't automatically hateful. Although they do get angry if you mine. Still, the Nether is never exactly safe. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful here. And I'm realizing I should have put cobble on my hotbar so I could start building right away. Okay, there are ghouls about. Let's get the portal walled off. Okay, that side's safe. Let's go out a couple spaces this way. I should have brought wood to make a fence or a door or something. Hmm, damn. Okay, and now let's make our entrance over this way. This is a very basic nether shelter. Portal shelter, I should say. Let's just put a torch down for the sake of, of vision. Yeah, this is just a quick and dirty way to make sure a ghast can't get a fireball in there. It isn't exactly a full-on bunker. Okay, initial safety gained. Let's venture out a little ways. See if I can find those Natura mushrooms. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Project Ozone 2, and I'm used to the Pikmin just being kill on sight. They feel downright chill now. Hmm. 
Those dogs are from Witchery, and they are bad news. Let me see if I can snipe him. No. Oops, a little high. There we go. Switch to other knives while first knives regen. All these knives have moss too. We have nether iron, tons of nether ores, but if I mine any of them, including nether quartz, while the pigmen are about, they will get very angry. And there is our first goal. Glow shrooms. Told you I wouldn't have to go far. Okay. With these, I can make mycelium. Okay, here we are back underground, just because I'm not going to use mycelium very often, and hey, it's kind of dark in here anyway. Doesn't need it in this pack, but it's thematic. I have a little mycelium bed here, and I have these brown mushroom spores, which I got from the Nature Seeds quest. Also, by getting that infestation spore, I get myself some red mushroom spores, as well as more mycelium in case I ever derp up and chew up that bed. No, oh, <laughs> I meant to. Brown mushroom spores are made by crossbreeding netherwort and potato seeds. So by having the potatoes right here, I can, of course, very quickly crossbreed the mushrooms. And red mushrooms are made from poppy seeds and nether wart. So, if I put those down, and you cannot until garden soil, but you can just break it with a non silk touch tool, and that will just give you its base form back. And I take some poppies. And now I can bone meal everything, and I believe bone meal does work on mushrooms as well. There you have it. Mushroom strength training. So, I have ventured back into the nether to slightly expand the portal cover. Just make it properly wrap around and put down the small supply depot that I brought with me. This one right now is just containing flint and steel as emergency reignition for the portal. And I thought I would show off something that I don't think everyone knows. When you have chisel, you can take a block and you can put it in the in there, and you can exit out and it's still held in your chisel. And now if you left click on a related block, and by that I mean like all these are variations on cobble. So if I click on any cobble derivative, I can chisel it. Quick decorating, as it were. Unfortunately, this degrades the chisel much faster than mass manufacturing blocks, so it does pay to plan ahead. But if you just have a structure that's up in a dangerous area, for instance, and you want it to make it a little bit more pretty, you can do that. Ah, here we are, the other thing I needed to come in here to find. A nether fortress. This is, to my knowledge, the only way to get netherrack. And I'm not just gonna jump down. I'm gonna make myself some stairs. I'm not an animal. And I don't have flight. One of those facts may be the more important deciding factor. Let's stay away from that blaze spawner. I'm just going to run through it and see if I can find a wart room. No. Those Thumbcraft bats are bad news. Yeah, that one wasn't so bad, but normally they come up to you and they just explode. Here we are, path down. That's promising. Ah, 
Haven't seen a single wither skeleton yet. That's worrying. Ah, here we are. That's more like it. Now, another wart, of course, as you saw, because it can breed with potatoes, is agricraftable, and its soil is soul sand, which I haven't otherwise run into. So I kind of need to farm a little bit of that in here, too. Excellent. I think those are the only things I need in the nether right now. So I was a little bit paranoid and overprepared, but I'd rather be overprepared than under. And anyway, these knives will just sit in the little supply depot, and when I get to the point that I am mining nether ores, they'll be useful for when a pigment inevitably kills me and I have to do a corpse run. So I think that's where I'm going to stop for today. Next up, I will be making those Batania runes, and I will be getting into the next tier of magical crops. I'll also potentially be starting with... oh dear. Nope. Oh, that would have been so cool. Come on. Come on. Okay, I'll stop trying to be cooler than I am. Yeah, I'll see you next time.